Hello everybody, it's me Solita Sims and today I'm going to be doing a little blender render tutorial for you guys. I really love making renders of my sims, it's kind of a new passion of mine. I think it's just really cool to make high quality images of your sims and someone asked me to do a tutorial on this so here we go. Just a heads up, you can only make renders of your sims if you are using Windows. You cannot, unfortunately, render sims if you're on Mac. When I was a Mac user, I found this out the hard way and I was devastated. <laughs> so just a heads up, sorry Mac users. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do before you start rendering is you're gonna wanna go into your Sims game and pick what Sim you're going to render with. I think for today, I'm going to do Gwyneth. She's gonna be my muse because she's my new Sim. She's part of the Not So Berry Challenge and I don't have that many renders of her. So what you're gonna do first is you can either create a new save file for this if you want, but you don't really have to. You just have to know what save file you're using for this. Gwyneth is in the Not So Berry save I have here. You're gonna click right here and this will pop up and it's going to tell you what save file this is under. This only applies if you have more than one save file. I have five or six, I think. So I don't really know which one's which. So you wanna make sure you know what save file you're in. And how to do that is just by looking at the last few digits of the slot number. So right there, it says slot underscore 00009445. So I want you to remember that save files number because that's very important later on write it down take a picture of it put it on a note on your computer do whatever just don't forget that save file next thing you're going to want to do is go into create a sim and make sure that your sims outfit is ready because this is the outfit you're going to be rendering <laughs> them in god girl that arm hair <laughs> it's blue that's so odd to see but okay all right so quickly i just made her a new outfit and this is the outfit I'm gonna use in my renders. So once you're done, you can save and exit out of The Sims 4. And make sure you remember what outfit your sim is going to be using. If it's gonna be Everyday 2 or Hot Weather 1 or Swim 5, make sure you remember that. All right, so to make renders of your sims, you're going to need a few programs. One of them is going to be Blender. You're going to need a specific version of Blender in order for this to work. You're going to need Blender version 2.83. And in order to download Blender version 2.83, you're gonna go up to where it says Downloads, and then you can find, where is it? The previous versions, you go to previous versions, and then right here, it's gonna have all the previous versions that you can download. You're gonna scroll to the bottom until you find Blender 2.83 and you're going to install it like you would install any other program on your computer. The next program you're going to need is going to be Sim Ripper and you can download it right on the Mod The Sims website. And you're going to need just this one right here. You don't need the source files, just the zip file. And again, download it like normal. And the last program you're going to need is Sims 4 Studio. And I will have the links for all of these programs in the description. Another thing you're going to need for your renders is poses. You can find pose packs on Tumblr, Pinterest, Instagram. I mainly use Pinterest. I find it the easiest. I really like this one by Miss Moon. I found it on Pinterest and it led me to their Patreon and you're just going to download it like normal. And this next step is optional. Uh, these are called Blender Scenes. They put a backdrop into Blender so your Sims can be standing in front of a really pretty backdrop. Um, again, this is optional. I'm going to show you two ways to put a background. I'm gonna show you how to put in a solid color and also a Blender Scene. So this part is optional. It does take a lot more power and it does take a lot more time, so it's not required. But if you want, you can look up Blender Scenes on Google or Pinterest. I usually go on Pinterest and you are going to download it, um, but not really do anything with it until we are in Blender. All right, so the first program we're opening up is Sim Ripper. Now, remember earlier when I told you to remember the number of the save file you're using? This is why. We're gonna go up to here to where it says select, and it's going to pull up all of our Sims 4 save files. The one that I was just in ended in 9445, so I'm going to select that one. And basically, it's going to load every single sim that exists in that save file. We're gonna find the sim that we want to use, and I think they sort it automatically by last name. Um, you can change this though, to first name or household name. 
I just use last name, her last name is Westwood, and we're going to select Gwyneth Westwood. Going to take a little bit of time to load, and now Gwyneth is loaded at the top right corner. She's in her work fit, I think, because that was the last outfit she had on when I was playing her, but I don't want that outfit, obviously. I want to use the outfit I just made for her, which was her Hot Weather 3 outfit. So I'm gonna go over here to where it says outfit, and then I'm going to select Hot Weather 3, and again, it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to load onto the sim. No! Oh my God, what is wrong with this hair? And now she's loaded in and I totally forgot something <laughs> that I just realized. When you've loaded your sim in Sims River, you wanna zoom in on them and just check and make sure that everything about them looks normal. Yeah, I forgot I already tried this hair and there's something about this hair that gives her that line across her forehead so it doesn't work. Maybe have like a duplicate of the outfit you're using and maybe use a different hairstyle or something because I don't know why certain hairstyles don't work in Sim Ripper. I could be wrong and maybe I just need to load it into Blender to see if it works, but I don't really want to take that risk and then be more frustrated than I already am. So I'm just going to select another outfit of hers. All right, I decided to use her cold weather outfit instead. I really love this outfit. And again, you just want to zoom in and check and make sure that everything looks normal. She looks normal in my opinion, so that's what we're going to go with. Now you want to export it and you're going to export it as a DAE. Over here it says save as and you're going to press DAE. And when it comes to making these renders, I recommend just making a folder for your sim so you can have everything organized and nice and pretty because it's going to get messy <laughs> um, the more you render a sim. So I made a, I have a different folder for all my renders, but I made this one just for this tutorial. It's called Gwyneth Tutorial and I have three separate folders, which is her DAE folder, her poses, and the renders, which is the end results. Um, so I'm going to put this in the DAE folder and Gwyneth Westwood, I'm going to put HW for hot weather one because it's her first hot weather outfit. And so you're done. You can do that as many times as you want for whatever different outfits you want. Like if you want to use one from her every day, from her hot, from her cold, from her swim, whatever, you can do that as many times as you want. But I'm only going to be making one or actually two renders of her with the same outfit, so I'm all done here. All right, the next program we're gonna be opening is Sims 4 Studio, and this is where you extract your poses that you're gonna be using for your render. So once you've downloaded it, you're going to go over here to where it says My Projects, and you're just gonna go into your Downloads folder and find the pose pack you just downloaded. I downloaded this one by Miss Moon, and you're just gonna open it up. Once you've done that, you're gonna wanna go up to the top left to where it says Clips, and it's going to pull up all the poses individually. Uh, depending on the creator, it might have the pictures of the poses in the thumbnail, um, I might have the numbers, whatever it is. I'm going to pick this one. It's very seductive, and I like it. So once you have it selected, you can go ahead and export it. Again, I'm going to put that pose in the folder I made for Gwyneth. So into the poses folder it goes. Oh, and you can go ahead and name it something. Let's see, I'm gonna name it <laughs> Sitting. I'm just gonna name it Sitting because I don't have any other ideas on what to name it. And you save it. We are in Blender 2.83. And now we can get on to actually making the render of our sim. So this is the first thing you're probably going to see when you open up Blender. It's just an empty world for all the possibilities in the world. And you can go ahead and delete the square. Just press the delete button on your keyboard. Um, and I'm going to delete the camera. I'm going to delete everything basically and the light. So I'm just left with a blank space. And uh, let me actually tell you how to use, how to like move around in Blender because I couldn't figure it out for the longest. In order to just move around like this, you just have to hold down the scroll wheel on your mouse. In order to move up and down like this, you wanna click shift and the scroll wheel at the same time to move yourself around. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the DAE of our sim that we're rendering. So to do that, you're gonna go up to here where it says file import DAE. You're gonna find the folder where your Sims DAE is and install it. And it'll end up in the center right there. And I know she looks kind of weird, but it's okay. In order to make her look normal, you just have to go up here to the top right to where it says viewport shading. Go ahead and click on that. 
and now she will look semi-normal but she doesn't look completely right you know the lighting's off the shading's off it just doesn't look good so how do we fix that we are going to go into the shader editor but first let's divide the screen in half so that we can see her while we're also editing the shading at the same time so to do that you're gonna want to go up to this little gap right here you're gonna have this little icon pop up and you can left click and drag this out so then it splits the screen in half and now we can see Gwyneth on this side while we're doing something else on this side. So now we're going into the shader editor. You're gonna go up here to where it has the editor type and then shader editor. Go ahead back to this side and click on your sim. And then this mess will pop up. And you're just going to follow what I do. Do I have any clue what it does? Absolutely not, but it looks good in the end, so hey. All right, you're gonna go over here to where it says color and drag it to where it says specular right here. Then we're going to type shift and A on our keyboard and this little menu will pop up. Go down to shader, go down to mix shader. You're gonna install this mix shader in between the BSDF and the surface line. Drag this BSDF from the second shader to the bottom shader. You're then going to drag this FAC or FAC to alpha. Shift A on your keyboard again, shader, transparent BD, BSDF. I keep thinking that says BDSM. Anyways, so we're gonna drag it somewhere in the middle right here. Just click it and drag this BSDF to this middle shader. And voila, now she looks semi-normal, but not completely normal because there's still something off. Her alpha details are kind of a mess i'm trying to drag it closer but sometimes it, it, it like sticks i don't know why but you can see her eyelashes look very blocky and weird so we're gonna fix that and by doing that you're gonna go over here to where it says rig the rig is gwyneth by the way click this little arrow and select gwyneth westwood or your sims name underscore glass and now you have noticed that this side on the shader editor kind of reset itself we're gonna do the same exact steps we did for the first time, okay? So we're gonna do color to specular, shift A, shader, mix shader, move this one to the third one, move fac to alpha, shift A, shader, transparent BSDF, not BDSM, and drag the BSDF to the middle shader. And it still looks bad, it still looks odd, and that's because we need to do one more thing. We're gonna go down here to this side to where it has the material properties. To where it says blend mode, we're gonna switch it from opaque to alpha hashed. And now she looks normal. Now she actually looks like how she does in the game. Make sure you save. Blender sometimes crashes at the most random times. So make sure you're constantly saving because having to redo all this is very annoying. So I'm going to save this in my renders folder because this is actual, we're actually rendering now. And I'm going to title this one GWH, all right, no, CW1, Gwyneth Westwood Cold Weather 1. You can title it whatever you want. That's just how I like to do it. And save as. Okay, so now we get to go to the part where we're actually posing her for her shot. And in order to do that, we're gonna go back up to where it has the editor type and we're going to go over here and click non-linear animation. And you're gonna have this blank space. We're gonna go into this window to where Gwyneth is. So do you see the little black dots kind of scattered around Gwyneth's face? You're gonna go ahead and click any one of those black dots and they're going to highlight into orange dots. Once they are orange, you're going to press I on your keyboard and you're gonna press lock rot. You're gonna go to this part where it says push down action, click it, then go right here to this highlighted part, right click it, and press delete strips. And now we're ready to pose. So in order to get our pose, we're gonna go up here to where it says file and append. We're gonna go back to that folder where we saved our exported pose that we exported from Sims 4 Studio, and we're gonna click it. Then we're gonna click action and the pose pack. Then once that's installed, we can go up here to where it says add, add an action strip, 
and we're gonna select the pose that we exported and watch what happens. Gwyneth is now doing that pose that we wanted. And it looks so good, oh my god. Some poses are a little wonky on my Sims, but this one looks really good on her. Again, I'm going to save it because this program is annoying. And we are now ready to add a backdrop or a scene. So I'm gonna show you guys two different ways to add a backdrop in the scene. Uh, the first one is very simplistic. It's more like adding a solid color behind your Sim. And the other is adding an actual high quality scene that has something going on in the background, like nature, a building, a beach, whatever it is. The first one we're gonna do just like a plain solid color. So we're gonna go back to the editor type and we're going to go to the 3D viewport again. And I want you guys to change your viewport to this viewport. This is basically how almost close to how your sim is going to actually look like in those rendered images. All right, so to get a backdrop, we're going to select Shift A on our keyboard, and then this menu will pop up and you're gonna go to where it says Mesh, and then Cube. And the same cube that was installed earlier is going to pop up, and we're gonna do something with it. In order to scale it, you have to just select S on your keyboard and move your mouse around. I'm going to make it very big so that Gwyneth is actually inside of the cube. So then make sure you have cube selected. It's already selected. We're going to go back down to the material properties, which is also already selected for me. And I'm going to click new. And here's a bunch of settings that all looks like word vomit for our cube. And the only thing I'm going to press is the base color and the surface. I don't know what anything else does, I'm gonna be honest. So the surface does what it sounds like, it changes the surface of the cube. I really like glossy, so I'm gonna put glossy on. And then we can go ahead and change the color of the cube. Oh my god, look, this has a color wheel, unlike The Sims 4. <laughs> Isn't that kind of a slap in the face? We can use a color wheel in Blender, but we can't use it in The Sims 4, a game that's been out for almost 10 years, interesting. We're going to select the color we want for our backdrop. Since this is a not so berry challenge and when this color is mint, I'm just going to go ahead and make her backdrop kind of like a minty green. And now I'm going to resize the cube. You don't have to do this, this is just my personal touch. I like to make it smaller because when it comes to lighting, the lighting will look better in a way. And you can also move or rotate the cube, by the way. These buttons up here, uh, these move or rotate or scale anything in the blender scene. Um, so I'm just gonna press move. I'm just gonna move it so where Gwyneth is like right in front of one of the walls. All right, perfect. Again, I'm going to save. Don't forget to save. And now we can do lighting because obviously this is way too dark. We can't see anything. So in order to add lights, you can click Shift A on your computer and go down to where it says light. And it's going to have four different types of light you can use. A point, a sun, a spot, or an area. An area is like for a really big scene you're doing. Um, it's not really good for a cube because it's a condensed space. So I don't recommend it. I've never really used spot. Sun is what it sounds like, it's a sun. And point is something that's much smaller, much simpler. So I'm gonna use point and a point will pop up. And like I said, you can move or rotate or scale these. I'm just gonna use these to move it around. And you can see on the left, it's creating that lighting that we need. I think that looks nice. I'm not gonna do too much. You can add as many points as you want. Maybe I'll add, maybe I'll add one more. Maybe like down below, change the color of the lights. You could change all the all the settings over here, the color, the power of the lights. I don't like how the shadowing looks, so I'm gonna deselect the shadowing over here on both of the points. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I like that. All right, so she is ready, almost. Now we have to add a camera. And to add a camera, you're going to do shift and your keyboard again, and then just select camera. And this camera will pop up. I want to see how Gwyneth looks though from the camera's point of view. So you can click this button on your keyboard. I have no idea what that button is. And all this is going to pop up and you're going to press view camera. And then you'll be basically taken in from the camera's point of view. And in order to change the camera's point of view, you have to move around your camera in the other window. The camera has so many different settings. I'm gonna take you through a few of them that I like to change. So over here to where it has the object data properties of the camera, 
Over here has the camera type. I'm gonna change it from perspective to orthographic. And instantly the, the camera's gonna change. It's gonna get like significantly bigger. You can change it just by clicking on the edges and dragging the camera in and out. Just make sure you do it kind of slowly. I'm gonna drag it to a point where I like. I think that is a good amount of zoom. I'm gonna go up to here to where it says the output properties and I wanna change the resolution because I don't really like this landscapey resolution. I'm going more for a portrait vibe. So the resolution of a portrait photo is 720 by 1080. So I'm gonna type 720 in, press enter, and then it changes the resolution of the image. I'm just gonna move that around a little bit more. I think I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. That's cute. And now it's the fun part. You get to actually see what your sin's gonna look like in the render. So in order to do that, we're gonna switch render engines. So over here where it has the render properties, right here it says the render engine and it has Eevee as the default. I'm gonna go ahead and change that to cycles. And on the left, you're going to see a massive change, but that's what your sin's gonna look like when they're rendered. It's so pretty and it's so exciting to see. And this is basically your last moment where you can fully examine your sim and make sure that they look completely fine just the way you want them to look in the final image. I'm also gonna change some other settings. Over down here, it says render, and the number that it has automatically is going to be 128 pixels. You can change this to whatever you want, but here's the thing, guys. Only change this on how powerful your computer is. Most people recommend ending at about a thousand pixels. Me personally, because my computer is so strong and I've done this many times without issues, I'm gonna do 1500 pixels, but that's because my computer can handle it. If your computer cannot handle it, don't, don't try this. Do your research, guys because you don't want it to crash or to damage anything. So be careful with this. I'm gonna do 1500 pixels because I can, doesn't mean that you should. So now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna go over here to where it has the output properties. I'm gonna change a few settings as well. I'm gonna change the color depth to 16. Then I'm gonna go right down below it to view layer properties and I'm going to click direct and indirect and indirect and direct and direct and indirect. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom and click denoising. So that's, that's it. I'm pretty satisfied with how Gwyneth looks in this shot so she's ready to render. So again, for the fourth time, fifth time, I'm gonna go over here and save. And then to actually render your sim, you go over here to where it says render and render image and this little window will pop up and the program will start rendering your image. Over here at the top, it tells you how much time it's predicting uh, for the render to finish. Mine says about 10 minutes, which is pretty normal. And down at the bottom, it'll also tell you how what percentage of the render is complete. So you just have to sit around and wait for your render to finish. All right, it's done. She looks so good. It took nine minutes and 35 seconds to complete. Not bad, not bad. That's pretty average for my computer. That's it, you've created a render, you're done. You can go up to the top where it says image and save. I should have created another folder that says PNGs, but for now I'll just save it into the folder and I'll make it the same thing. Gwyneth Westwood, Cold Weather 1. And now our basic render is done. We can move on to importing a Blender scene and adding that to your render. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this cube and I'm actually gonna exit out of cycles and go back into Eevee. And we are back to square one with no backdrop. Blender scenes you could find on Google, you could find on Pinterest. I get most of mine from Pinterest. And I think I'm gonna use one that I already have. I'm very picky when it comes to my blender scenes, but I haven't really found one that I like so far. And you also wanna make sure that your blender scenes work for Blender 2.83 and below, because any blender scene you use that is higher than that will not work. So once you've downloaded your blender scene like normal, we are going to go ahead and open that blender scene into a new project. This is my folder of blender scenes. I think I'm gonna use the one that I 
always use that I really love, which is this garden swing one. And what I'm basically gonna do is I'm going to just select the whole thing and press Control C or copy on my keyboard. I'm gonna go back to the project with Gwyneth in it. I'm not gonna save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and select Control V on my keyboard, which is paste. And it's going to paste the whole scene down. And now there's a blender scene. And we can do the same things that we were doing earlier, like adjusting the camera, zooming in, zooming out, getting the angle right. I think I want to do something like that. And I'm going to remove the swing. You just select it and delete it because I don't really like the swing. And then I'm going to go back into cycles to see how the lighting works. So sometimes the lighting in these uh, scenes, it really throws off everything. So I want to make sure it looks right in cycles and it does. It actually looks so pretty in cycles. Look at her. Okay, wait for it to calm down, but look at her, she looks so good. I'm gonna make a few more alterations with the camera. I'm gonna zoom out. No, actually, I'm gonna zoom in just a bit. I'm gonna move it to the right just a bit. And then I'm gonna go back into cycles. And I really, really like that. And again, once you're done, you go ahead and you save it go to render and you render your image when using scenes and renders it might take a little bit more time for your render to finish but just sit back and relax and watch it happen And it's done! She looks beautiful, it looks so high quality and nice, and you can save it again like normal by going to the top, image, save, naming it whatever you want, and you're done rendering. So that is it guys, that is how you render your sims in Blender. I hope this was very helpful. Again, I will have the links to all the programs I use down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to respond to them. But that is it, you guys. Thank you for watching and have fun rendering your sims. See you guys.